you can't dissolve your past because you haven't surrendered to it. Grand rising, beautiful kings and queens, and welcome to the Loving Yourself Unconditionally Beyond Abuse podcast. You can't dissolve your past because you haven't surrendered to it. What do I mean by that? I had to break down and cry about some old pain last night. And I don't, you know, I got my glasses on today, but if I have my glasses off, y'all probably can see, y'all probably see that my eyes are a little bit swollen because I was crying this morning too. But I know as a self-love coach and healer that this is what healing is because, um, you know, I keep holding on to it and last night I just cried and was just like help me to release these feelings you know help me to release the past you know because I can't live in the past if I truly desire to have the love and you know the 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 healthy happy passionate fun playful adventurous loving monogamous heterosexual connected compassionate interdependent soulmate relationship that I desire with my divine masculine if I'm still holding on to the pain of my past and past lovers and past would have been or could have been or should have been you know and also I'm going to get emotional the the past wounds of my father you know and even if I did love those men in my past more than they ever could love me taught me some things you know so I don't have to continue dwelling on the past I don't have to run back to the past you know I can I can truly heal that part of me once and for all and tr open up my heart again to receive the love that I desire and deserve and it's the, the love that I have to give on the inside of me. And that's why I deserve it and that's why I know it even though I still do have sometimes doubts believing it, I still go forth. That's in everything that I do. You know, like I don't, I don't let that, that voice of you're not good enough stop me anymore. It, it sometimes it does give me a little pushback, but I'm no longer allowing it to stop me anymore. So, um, you know, but I, I realized that I have to let go of, you know, the idea that, you know, me and the man in 2015, you know, that that was the best relationship because the more that I love myself unconditionally beyond the abuse of my past, I realized it showed me what I deserve and what I should never settle for. You know, like, in the beginning, it, it was. It was a loving relationship. We knew each other's love language. It was just, it was effortless. It was effortless. Like, it was easy. Like, love was easy. You know, like, there wasn't, there wasn't a need to, to fight for it or, you know, anything like that. You know, just... It was, and I know, I realize now, looking in hindsight, I can, I can view now and say, okay, this is, this is, this is where I went wrong. And I know that a lot of it is I pull back. I pull back when, when things are getting deep. Um, how did I stay in that 20 year relationship? Because I was self-medicating the whole time. So I wasn't allowing myself to feel and with this relationship, I wasn't in that space anymore. You know, like I wasn't always, I had a balance in my life with it, even though I still was drinking. Like, like I tell people, if you, if you enjoy your wine every now and again, like I believe in moderation, but I don't drink anymore because I don't like how it makes my body feel. You know, I don't like how it, it does not help assist with my libido. You know, it actually uh, hinders my libido. Um, and then, like, I have these pains in my stomach after I'm done drinking. And then, 
like sometimes if I, whatever I drink, a mimosa, if I drink a Moscato, if I drink wine, if I drink, you know, anything, like I'll have this, this burping smell. Like when I burp, it'll smell like egg. And so I was just like, you know what? Like, I think that's my body telling me that enough is enough. And so I decided to let the alcohol go. And I don't smoke marijuana anymore because of the way that that makes me feel. Genuine THC marijuana makes me paranoid. It makes me anxious. It makes me think things, you know, that are not real. Like, in relationships, you know, like it has me hallucinating almost, you know, so that's why I prefer the CBD because the CBD, it has more CBD in it, more of the hemp sativa in it, um, I mean more of the hemp plant than the sativa, the THC, it has like 3% THC, so it's very little, so yes, you do get that, you do get that psychedelic, in a sense, high, but it's a relaxer for you. It's a it's a relaxation for you. So, um, but it's it's not like the the psychedelic high where you're just like thinking all kind of weird shit about your spouse or your significant other or whatever. It's to a totally different feeling. It doesn't have any, you know, it doesn't produce any anxiety effects or uh, effects of depression, anything like that. So, you know. Actually, I, I feel that it helps a lot more with my emotions, you know, with releasing my emotions more um, than hindering. So, but I don't, you know, like I said before, it's moderation, you know, so I typically don't in indulge in it until, you know, after I'm done with, you know, my day, my daily duties, then I'll, you know, I might sit out, I might sit outside. It doesn't happen every night, you know, um. I do have, uh, you know, gummies that I will use at night before before I rest, you know, to wind down. And I do that because it is it is a relaxant to my energy, you know, because I am this high vibrational person all day. And so, like, when you go to bed, you tend to, you know, you can't turn your mind off sometimes, you know, because you are this creative person. You're always thinking of things, you know, different things to do. So it's a way to kind of, like, just woosa, relax, you know, enjoy your night and then get back up and produce, you know. So, um, and again, it's not all the time. Like I have um, Valer, I have this tea. It's called, um, it's called deep relaxation tea. I sometimes will do that. I'll take a bath and drink that. So it just really depends on the night. And some nights don't call for it because some days I'm not doing anything. I'm just relaxing you know so I can I've been relaxing all day I know my mind is going to um, it's like mostly my self-care days so I know my mind is going to to at ease itself and then I can lay down so you know I'm just getting myself more into that routine so that I can you know slowly just eliminate that you know all together um, and it's a process the same thing it is with vegan so I've been doing you know the nature cereal in the morning and having like salads and um, china masala, you know, like chickpeas. And I went to Chick-fil-A the other day and I got sick. Like it gave me some badass bubble guts. And I had, you know, like kind of like the Taco Bell stuff, you know. And I was like, okay, I can't. That's telling me right. My body telling me right there. I can't do any more Chick-fil-A. You know what I'm saying? At least not the nuggets anyway. So maybe that's me finally releasing meat. But, you know, it's all a process. And so, you know, like, I haven't really fully experienced my life outside of abuse and abusive relationships, right? Because I was in an abusive relationship for 20 years. And then right after, you know, in the midst of me leaving that, I got involved with someone and then stayed chasing behind him for, you know, three years until, well, actually two, like two years because the last time I seen him was in like February 2017 and then spent like six months by myself and then met somebody else and then that was like four months and then that didn't work and then you know he was cheating and then spent a year and seven months by myself and then met the man in 2019 who was cheating you know so it's like but I had more stability in that relationship I was willing to let that one go a lot faster than all the other ones even though I did go back to it you know um you know finally being able to let that go and so 
just, you know, realizing that um, because I have so much life to live and so much love to give that I shouldn't get caught up in that one encounter, that one situationship that didn't work out. I thought I was ready, you know, I, I mean, I thought I was ready most recently for a relationship. And while I am ready externally, like I have made room in my life, I have made room, room in my heart, but I also know that I have to heal that wound of my father. And it not only stems from my father, it also stems from my stepfather, you know, because he was the first man to really betray me, betray my trust and to leave me behind because he, he got something better, you know, and that was a, a child of his own, which I love my sisters, you know, but I realized that this was an unhealthy man too. And, you know, he had, he had numerous children before my mother, you know, because they were like my, my, my half brother and sister. And we used to, you know, get along and, and, and play together and stuff like that. But when it was just me, him and my mother in the house, he treated me like I was his own. You know, like I have always loved singing and dancing from a young age. You know, I, I was in plays from a young age. I love, I still love musicals, operas. Those are like my favorite things. Like I love a musical, right? Like my life is a freaking musical. I go around here like, you know, like I'm in a musical, right? And this is how I've been, you know, like even as a child and so, my favorite shows were Fame and Solid Go. So like I've always loved to dance and Debbie Allen was like a huge, a huge staple in my life, you know what I'm saying? And so I've always been a fan of music and dancing and all types of music and, and my stepfather took a notice in that, you know? And maybe that was a way for him to get closer to my mother, you know, and he used my love of, of dance and music to seduce me, not in a sexual way, but in a mental way. And, and we would sing duets with, you know, Hall and Oates, that was our favorite, and then Ashford and Simpson, you know, and from a young age, I would listen to like Irwin and Fire and James Ingram and Michael McDonald and Harlan Oates and Ashford and Simpson and all of them, right? So I had like this old soul from the beginning, you know, um, the oldies but goodies love me some Marvin Gaye, you know, like um, things, things like that, you know, so, and he was my duet partner. And once my mother gave birth to my middle sister, things changed. He started to, you know, before my sister was born, he never laid a hand on me never spoke to me in a negative way. And then after my sister was born, he began physically abusing me. The first incident occurred when I was walking home from school with my friend. Now my friend, I don't know if y'all know about curls, but back in the day, when you got a curl, you had to cut off, it's kind of like the big chop when you going from perm to natural. And that's how it was with curls. You had to, do, you had to cut off all your hair and get a perm in order for it to grow right, right? So my friend, she was a girl, she had got, she just got her perm done. You know, everybody wanted a perm when you was eight years old. You know, in the hood anyway, I don't know about y'all, but we all wanted the perm shoot. When, when salt and pepper came out, I can remember me and my seventh grade friend, Tamika, we had the salt and pepper cut. She got her hair cut, she got her curl cut with the little tail on one side, I got my curl cut with the tail on the other side. Shoot, you couldn't tell us nothing. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, and from a distance, yeah, she looked like a boy. You had to get your hair cut off. And, and that was like the ugly stage. But once you, once your hair started growing out, and like when me and Tamika had our salt and pepper cuts, we had got fancy. We had started getting the optimum ways. You know what I'm saying? Like them the deeper ways. <laughs> like you don't know nothing about no curl. But, um, you know, and, and then according to him, I was like a few minutes past my normal arrival time at home, you know. And so... I can only take his word for that. I'm eight years old. If I don't have no watch, I don't have no clock. If you say I'm late, then I'm late, right? And like he yelling at me for walking with a boy and I'm trying to explain to him that it's not a boy, it's a girl. You actually know her, you know, um, and all this other stuff. And he made me strip down to my underwear and he beat me with a thick ass switch. And I had welts on my body for days. And I told my mother 
and she didn't believe me. In fact, she said that I probably deserved it. And I explained the entire situation. And the next incident happened when I was 10. I was in my room and I had these bunk beds that had like a little ledge that you could stand on, kind of like a balance beam. And I was listening probably to Michael Jackson or Donna Summer, somebody, and my hair was wild. You know, I, I always had a head full of hair. It was wild because my mother wasn't doing it. I wasn't doing it. And I was just singing and dancing. And he came and grabbed me by my head and threw me down the stairs backwards. And I am trying to fight to hold on to the banister to, to find so that I would not crash my back into that wall. So these wounds, they not only stem from my father, but from the father figures that I had in my life that were not positive, that betrayed me, that lied to me, that used me, that abused me. So, you know, I've always been, you know, this slim petite person. And the physical abuse that he that he inflicted upon me didn't occur when my mother was at home. He only did it when my mother was not there. And every time I told my mother, she said, I probably deserved it. So when you experience mental and emotional abuse as a child, these will forever be two areas that you'll need to pay, pay close attention to. You constantly have to make sure that you are gaining knowledge mentally, attaining more knowledge, and giving extra attention to your emotional transparency and vulnerability. You know, I've said this before that there are some wounds that you heal instantly from. And then there are others that take a little longer and you have to dig a little deeper to nurture them properly. And I'm so happy I'm single because every time I do this free 30 day coaching on loving yourself unconditionally beyond abuse, I get to focus on a different area of healing. And my focus, while I've decided to continue to remain single for this year, is to love that daddy wound a little bit deeper. Because I continue to attract abusive men into my life and who treat me like an option instead of the rare jewel that I am because I continue to believe that that's all I deserve. You know, that's constantly what I had beat into my brain from a young age. I was an option with my father and I'll always be, and I'll always see myself as an option. I push away all the men who desire to love me and love the men who abuse me and pressure me because then I can abuse and, and pressure them too. That was previously, because now it's like, I'm not, I'm not abusing nobody, I'm not pressuring nobody. I know exactly what I deserve this time around. And I'm willing to wait on it. I'm willing to wait on it. I'm not jumping into anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just not doing it. I'm going to get to know this person on a deeper level, not just through social media. You know, yeah, and, but, but what I'm doing right now is being a friend because in order to have what you deserve, you have to be a friend, you know? So I have to be a friend in order to be able to receive a friend into my life, right? And so I love being, when I'm single, I love using this time to assist others on their journey, but also I'm assisting myself because like I said, every time I do this 30 day coaching challenge, you know, every day I do this 30 day um, loving yourself beyond, loving yourself unconditionally beyond abuse, it assists me. I continue to grow. So I want to encourage everyone who listens to this podcast, who watches the YouTube videos, that if you have been considering joining me, you, you're never alone. 
I'm, I'm there and I love being able to learn along with my clients and become a healthier, happier, and truer version of myself. You know, this helps me as much as it helps you. And yes, I, I'm able to teach it. I'm qualified to teach it because I've been through it. And while I'm still healing, I can continue to assist others along on their journey. You know, because that's really what it's all about. We are all assisting each other on this journey. And so when you join the private Facebook community, know that I'm walking right beside you. I'm doing, I'm doing the work. I'm doing the work right with you and I'm posting it and letting you guys know my transparency and how, how I'm dealing with it. So hopefully that can help you. And I post videos every single day. And I also write a little excerpt under it. So you're getting, you're getting what you need. And then we're going to do um, a 60-minute live training the third Friday. Every time we start this thing 30 days. You know, it's 30 days to becoming a healthier and more confident version of yourself. And after your 30-day journey... If you decide that you are ready to go deeper in a supportive members-only community, you will receive a $70 discount off your first two months member fee. The normal membership price is $99 a month. But I'm giving you $29 for your first two months. But what you will also receive after, because you went through the 30 days with me, you will receive 40 additional dollars every single month off of the membership fee, which is $49 a month if you, continue, if you want to continue after those two months. The Members Only Group dives deeper into loving yourself unconditionally. We, we focus on mental for two months. We focus on emotional for two months. We focus on spiritual for two months. We focus on physical for two months, um, relational for two months, and financial for two months. And every month we do two 85-minute live trainings and we'll go over whatever questions you guys have and I'll train on that and then we can do, um, we can do like breakout rooms with other people. Um, and, and like group therapy, so it'll be, not, I want to call it therapy, but it's like a group, group setting. So, and then we'll come back for Q and A, um, and, 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 and any, any takeaways for going to the next, you know, two weeks until we do the next live training. You also receive a 30 minute free one-on-one, -on -one, uh, mentoring session with me private via zoom. So. Um, and, and you get all your workbooks, your books, everything is included in that membership fee. Um, and again, it is, uh, it is open and you can register today if you've already begun your self-love journey, but you're feeling stuck in one area or more, you're, and you're ready to dive deeper in a supportive members-only community, you can register at suzysotos.com and receive a $40 discount on the normal registration fee membership fee of $99. So you'll be paying $49 every month thereafter. But you have to register before April 12th. The price increases to $99 a month after April 12th. Um, but I want to see more people win in life and in love this year. If you've enjoyed learning about this topic today, subscribe to my free monthly news self-care newsletter where I provide self-care tips and tools um, and if you are listening on uh, Anchor, Pocket Cast, Spotify, uh, radio, I don't even know that one. I, I still didn't. I'm going to have to get it out after I do this one. Um, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Breaker, uh, Share. Share if you feel that someone will benefit from this. If you are watching via YouTube, like, comment, share, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications because I release a new video every single day, okay? And y'all know we have come to the end of the program. 
And I thank you all so very much for being here. But I got to send y'all out with a prayer of love from the universe because my heart is so full. After last night, I have been crying. I have to love on the universe. So, uh, dear universe, I thank you for another day. I thank you that I am alive and well today. That today is another day to love myself deeper and to heal that father wound. I thank you for being divine God, the universe, universal life force, source, mother earth, mother nature, energy, life force, prana, chi, my world, my life, my everything, my song, my melody, my symphony, my harmony. You are the air that I breathe. And I'm thankful. I haven't always been able to see it, but the pain of the past was my purpose, it was my purpose to be here and serve humanity in this capacity today. It was hard going through. I still sometimes have hard days when I'm thinking about the past, the past memories, the, the would have been, the could have been, the should have been, never realizing that everyone that I encounter, every relationship was a guide, a guide leading me to loving myself unconditionally so that I can find that deep love within you, that, that love of the father that I was missing. Many people don't understand why some people call God he, why some people call God she. Because God has been the father the, the husband, the lover, the man that I've never been able to depend on. That I've never been able to love properly because of my past hurt. Because of my past pain. I get to practice on God I get to love God every single day of my existence and heal that wound before I am ready to receive that divine masculine into my life. was a guide and the poet is a guide, it doesn't matter. They're all moving me in my direction to heal that wound more so that I can properly 
receive and take care of that man in the same way that I love and take care of you. You have my heart, my mind, my body, and my soul. No one else can touch this until they're ready themselves to dive deep with me, getting to know me on a friendship level. They can't do that. They don't deserve it. I'm thankful for your love, your guidance, your teaching. I'm thankful for spirit guides, guardian angels, dream angels. I'm thankful for crystal energy and, and plant energy and sun energy. I'm thankful for kayaking energy. <laughs> grateful for my singleness because it has blessed my life so completely. It has allowed me to see my own worth, my own value, the own, my own uniqueness that I have to bring to this world, that I offer this world. And it doesn't compare to anyone else's because everyone else is unique in their own right too. And that's what makes us all so fucking beautiful that we are we are images different colors different shades different shapes of you but so many of us are afraid to dive into our own divine identity as kings and queens and rise up to become who we came here to be. I love you. It doesn't matter where I, whether I'm experiencing famine or whether I'm feasting, whether I live in abundance or in need, whether I am experiencing sunshine or rain, whether I am experiencing joy or pain, my heart is yours. My heart belongs to you Whatever you need There's nothing I won't do I said whatever you want My heart belongs to you I said whatever you need I'll be right here I am abundantly blessed above all I could ever ask, think, or imagine. I am blessed to be a blessing and a servant to others. It is a privilege and honor to serve in this manner. And um, I'm thankful I got another beautiful day to do it. I'm knocking these podcasts out with me and my baby about to enjoy this vacation. What? <laughs> Yes, we about to enjoy it. I'm just going, I'm leaving that, 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 that social cell phone here. I'm turning it off. We are going to have a great time. So, and I thank you for that because I wouldn't be able to do it without you. So let's rock this day out. Let's get her done. And so be it. And so it is. Amen, amen, and amen. I thank you all for being here. I love you. I want you to go out. Have an awesome, amazing, and beautiful day today. From my heart to yours, as always, namaste. If you experienced rejection, abandonment, trauma, or abuse as a child, you may find it difficult to create a healthy, happy, and holistic life. You are not alone. I am Coach Susie, and I am a survivor of addiction and narcissistic domestic violence abuse. I was raised by a mother who experienced narcissistic personality disorder, and I experienced every type of abuse. I was rejected, abandoned, and traumatized before the age of 10. 
as I grew older, I attracted these same type of relationships into my life because this was my life. It was all I knew and it was what I was accustomed to until I introduced myself to something different. In 2015, I left a 20 year unhealthy and abusive relationship with a man who struggles with narcissistic personality disorder. And I began a journey into loving myself unconditionally. It took me five years to accomplish living a happy, healthy, and holistic life, and that was primarily due to the lack of financial and educational resources for people like me who were severely traumatized as children and grew up in impoverished neighborhoods. The Loving Yourself Unconditionally movement was created from the mind of a traumatized child who struggled for years with self-doubt and low self-esteem. But I learned to love herself unconditionally beyond past abuse and thrive successfully in life with PTSD, bipolar disorder, and ADHD. I struggled to love myself unconditionally due to the mental and emotional abuse I received as a child. The voices of doubt, fear, and not good enough would constantly haunt me until I began to change my mind. The Loving Yourself Unconditionally movement is a community of people who desire to learn practical and effective ways to love themselves unconditionally beyond abuse. The Loving Yourself Unconditionally movement is not about chasing perfection and trying to be perfect. It's about learning to love yourself unconditionally in every area of your life, no matter what that looks like. It's about becoming the healthiest, happiest, and truest version of yourself, no matter what that looks like. If you are ready to learn how to love yourself unconditionally beyond abuse, pre-register today at suzysotos.com. Everyone has something to teach us. My question to you is, are you ready to learn?